In my last video, I talked about the triple bottom line, some of its strengths, but also some of its weaknesses. And among those main weaknesses are the following. There's no operating system for you to follow. There's no flow. The triple bottom line maintains the existing linear business model. And we showed in the last video how there is a limited utility in the model to deal with complexity. So how are we going to deal with each of these three things? The first one is we need to have a system that has an operating system. And the only one we know that works sustainably is that of nature. So I'm going to be talking about nature's operating system. When it comes to maintaining the linear model, what are we going to put in its place? Well, we have to go through another transformation in order to come up with the alternative. And so in this video, I'll do that transformation for you with a complete head twisting, axis shifting review of what I call unsustainability. And lastly, we have to have a model that is robust enough to deal with the complexity and has the facility for it to go in from macro to macro and zoom in and out as we need to, to be able to interrogate the model and get deeper and deeper into these areas of complexity, which we can't just ignore. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start on these three things in the next series of videos. I'm going to start with the axis shift or paradigm shift on unsustainability. Why is it that we are still unsustainable after all this time of trying to work on sustainability? And I'm going to use the same Sierpinski gasket fractal model, but it, adapt it to this new question. And the way I'm going to do that, is I'm going to be using framework developed for problem solving by Perry Marshall and Associates. And it starts in this bottom left corner by stating what is the problem. What's the problem that we're trying to solve? And in our case, we're trying to solve the problem of unsustainability. Why is it that we're unsustainable? And then we go on to the second triangle at the top here. And this is where we get to the transformation. The problem that we are seeing here is really only the presenting problem. It's not the real hidden underlying problem. And we have to get into a transformation in the second part of the model. And then thirdly, after we've gone through a transformation, there has to be a final synthesis. So having questioned the problem, transformed it, we have to synthesize it and come up with a new, a new problem to solve. One that gives us a better chance of solving it because we're looking at it in a different or transformed way. Just as we did in our review of the triple bottom line, we're going to start using the fractality of this, uh, this mathematical model to enable us to go deeper and deeper inside each of these questions and to begin to address the complexity that we have to face up to. And so I'm going to start here and create the triangles. That take us to that next level. And this first triangle here is the old dilemma. What's the question we're facing now that we don't know how to solve? The second triangle is the transformational triangle. And the question here is how do we reframe this original question, the original problem, so that we see it in a new light? This is the axis shift, the paradigm shift. And at the end of this, we have a new dilemma. We've reframed the problem. And so you'll see that this is an actual dynamic framework. Unlike the triple bottom line, which had no flow, had no system, there is here a flow and a system. We go from the original problem, reframe the problem, and then we come up with a new dilemma. Then the new dilemma 
moves up here to the first triangle in the transformation. And this is where we have the new question. At the top of the transformation, we have to have a symbiosis. We have to have innovation. We have to bring two things together that haven't come together and to enable the transformation to happen. If we just stay in the old system as we did with the triple bottom line, we get no change to the underlying system. So here there has to be some innovation. This innovation comes through symbiosis. And I'll go into more of each of these different parts as we go further into this video. The third triangle here in the transformation process is we have to take something away. We have to subtract something. The something that we don't want in addition to what we do want in the new transformation. Once we've done this transformation, which again is a system, it goes round and forms a continuous process, we move to the final synthesis. And in this synthesis, we end up down here with new hope. Because we've reframed the question, because we have a new, a new question to answer, because we've gone through a transformation and a symbiosis, we've got new hope that we can actually solve the problem. And this change brings about a need for a new standard. And this triangle here is where we'll talk about the new standards that begin to come into the new world. And finally, at the end here of the synthesis, we have new emergent properties. There are things that emerge and come out of the old problem that we see in a completely different light because we've gone through this transformation. And again, as we go through further into the video, I'll explain each of these parts in more detail. In our new model, the key takeaway here is that there is a system, there's an operating framework, and this operates at the meta level, from problem to transformation to synthesis. And as we now move into a deeper dive into each of the different sections here, there is, as we showed in the beginning part of this video, the system within a system for each of these triangles. So this really is beginning to get to the heart of how nature really works, because nature is a system that has systems within systems within systems. And fundamentally, in the center of our model is truth. You might look at this as being nature's principles. There are laws and there are operating principles that are immutable. And so we have to base all of our thinking in the real world. This isn't just a conceptual model. It is a conceptual model, but it's trying its best to be based on fundamental principles so that it's a reliable model. Of course, it's only an approximation, but it's a way for us to begin to bridge from the question we're going to deal with first, which is how does nature operate? And then we can bridge to how could businesses operate in the future if they were more like how nature works. And here in the center, there is only truth. There are things that you don't know you don't know, but in the end, there is no problem. There's only the fundamental truths. And so we have to try and get at these fundamental truths as best we can in our human way. So let's look in more detail at the problem triangle. Here, now that we've subdivided into the nine segments, just as we did when we were looking at the triple bottom line, the first corner triangle here is the problem within the problem triangle. And this is the old dilemma. Why are we still unsustainable? And we have to go around the system and transform that. And the way we do that is we keep asking why until we get a better question. Why are we still unsustainable? Oh, we've got global warming. Why have we got global warming? Oh, we're putting too much CO2 into the atmosphere. And we keep on interrogating this question why over and over until we can get to the underlying problem, the hidden problem, that we've not really been dealing with. And so we've been trying to solve this whole problem, but we haven't framed the question in a way that allows us to get to the solution. And when we go through this exercise and we look in more detail at the reframing, 
we realize that it's the underlying business model that we have, this linear model that people often just simply condense down into take-make-waste, but it's really we take materials, we make things, we distribute things, we market things, we sell things, we use things, and then at the end of the use, we throw them away. And it's this linear flow where we keep having to go back to the beginning and start over again that's the driver of all of these unsustainability symptoms that we can talk about as waste or global warming and so on. Could be maybe toxicity. They're all driven by the choices we've made in the linear business system. So now we go through to the new dilemma. Well, the new dilemma is how do we create a business system that isn't linear? And of course, that's where the leap comes in thinking about now we want a different form than linearity. We want circularity. And so hence, we begin to talk about the circular economy. This is the real reason why circularity and so the circular economy has come to the fore because we've realized that the old dilemma, the old question we've been asking, wasn't really adequate to enable us to provide a solution. It doesn't mean to say that circular economy has overtaken sustainability. It just means it's a new strategy within our approach to how do we have businesses that can, over time, become more sustainable. So next, we're going to move this new dilemma up here and transform it. This becomes the new question that we have to solve. So as we move on now in our transformation process, we've moved the new dilemma that we came up with in the first iteration here now to the new question. And that requires new assumptions and new thinking. And when we transform this, we move up to a process of symbiosis. We have to have innovation coming from outside of the system. We have to bring two things together that haven't been brought together to, uh, this before. And at the same time, we have to take something away. We've got to subtract or eliminate something. And this is the next cycle that we have to go through. And then finally, we're going to go through a final synthesis where we come up with this new world that we're aiming to innovate into. And now as we come to the final synthesis triangle, we see that we have new hope and it comes from a dissatisfaction with the status quo. Doing the same thing over and over again, and remaining unsustainable, is beginning to get pretty tiresome. People want to change, and they need new hope. And the circular economy is one of the ways in which that new hope is coming into being. And this new circular economy requires new standards and sets new expectations for companies. And that's why there's so much talk in business about what is the circular economy? What are the new standards? What is the new expectation that's coming from society and from governments? And here in the bottom corner, we have new emergent properties. The world changes. The world continues to change. And we have new behavior. There are new greener consumers and users who turn up and want to buy products that are different than the ones they had before. So markets begin to change and companies have to adapt. And even culture changes. In my work across South America, I've seen a very rapid transformation in the approach to a sustainable circular economy from when myself and some of my colleagues first went there 12 or 14 years ago and started introducing these ideas. So change is happening. It may be a little bit under the surface. You may not be always seeing it, and that's why in our work we use our radar chart. We're forever looking out at the horizon and as if we're in the air traffic control, watching the sweep of the radar arm and seeing the planes move. Well, in this case, we're seeing all of these new standards and expectation change. And depending on what industry you're in, some of those changes will come at you faster than some others, and some will be slow. But you need to be attuned to this. You need to have your radar antenna out and operating so that you can adjust your business to meet the new standards, the new expectations, these emergent properties that are happening as we speak. So that's a sort of programmatic framework that we can use to move from the old question that we've been unable to solve for the last 40 plus years and to begin to apply some new thinking. But at the core of this 
is this idea of symbiosis and transformation reframing the question and the fundamental change of business models from linear to something else which will be approximating circularity which is of course how nature operates this is what we have to consider now and how we do this is a grand experiment we don't know how all of these different things are actually going to work if we did know we'd have done it already now I haven't said much about this inner section of the truth which is here in each of the three of the elements that we just went through here when we're looking at the old dilemma we end up with the questions that nobody dares to ask. And one of those questions, for example, is the question of perpetual growth. Can every company grow at 5, 6, 7, 10% a year forever? Or are there natural limits to growth that we have to pay attention to? In nature, there isn't perpetual growth. There's growth to maturity. And then there's aging and death. And so we have to look at what does growth mean in this new context up here when we're doing our transformation and we're trying to innovate we have to test our innovation against the harsh reality and that harsh reality is the real world the real business world in which we operate it's all fine and, and good for me to have a nice concept that i can spend a few minutes here talking you through but in the end we have to apply it in a real business in real time and one of the toughest jobs of all is to transform a business while it remains in business. And this is one of the hardest challenges that we have to work with. And then finally, in this bottom section here, the middle missing element is proof. We have to do this in the harsh reality of the real world. And we have to prove that what we're postulating here as a concept can actually work. And that's why all of these things, all of the things we try inside businesses are incremental experiments in a way. We're trying things out. We're trying things out in a way that we're being risk averse. We don't want to obviously just collapse our existing business. We have to stay in business while we reinvent our business. But along the way, while we're in business in the linear economy, we have to be doing these experiments, as I call them, um, little tests of what this new emergent property, what these new standards and expectations really are. And this is what some of the new companies that are turning up on the scene are doing. New companies are showing up all the time that don't have any of the old baggage. They're only operating this new reality with the new emergent properties and new standards and new requirements. And so in a way, they have a leg up on the existing business, which is stuck in its old linear model and is trying to make a change and we have to do this incrementally as fast as the business potentially can and as fast as we can bring our customers along for the ride with us so that's the theory that's how we get from being unsustainable and being stuck in unsustainability to paying attention to new innovations new ways of thinking thinking about things we have to eliminate, think about things we have to innovate and do differently against this backdrop of the reality of the real world. In the next videos, I'm going to be talking more about how we make the leap from this theoretical construct that I call the transformation triangle and how we begin to first understand how nature works with what I call my design-like nature framework. Then after we've gone through the nature's version we have to come up with the equivalent for business and so those are the next few videos that you're going to see coming out after this one if you like what we're doing here give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and then you'll get first view of all the new stuff that's coming out and feel free to connect with me on all the usual social media so where does that leave us we've gone through in just under 20 minutes a complete transformation of the problem of unsustainability now in reality what we've been going through here takes weeks and months inside a business because businesses and the problems we face are very complicated. But here I'm trying to give you the essence of what we try to do when we look at sustainability and now the new circular economy. We started out in the bottom corner here looking at the presenting problem, the question of unsustainability. And we realized that it was the wrong question and in transforming the question 
we came up with a new, better question, which got to the underlying issue that was behind the problem, that was causing the symptoms. And we also raised a specter of questions that people almost dare not ask. Governments don't ask, businesses don't ask. And one of those is about perpetual growth. Can we grow forever? Can you put a 5, 6, 7, 10% growth rate on your business forever into the future? Nature doesn't work like this. Nature doesn't grow ad infinitum into the future. In the top triangle up here, we looked at the transformation itself. And we came out with a really strong sense that we had to get innovation into this new system to deal with the new question that we came up with. And the symbiosis, the bringing together of two things from the outside of the current system, our sustainability and the circular economy. And it's the bringing together of the two, the symbiosis of the two, that's important. Sustainability on its own isn't enough. Circularity on its own isn't enough. We have to have sustainable circularity. I can think of many circular eco economies which are completely unsustainable. And we're doing this transformational work in the harsh reality of the real world of a real business operating, not just a theoretical construct. And here in the end, we looked at the synthesis and came up with our new hope, our new standards, and the new emerging markets and um, systems that are coming to, to fruition as we begin to move into this new reality. And I didn't talk very much about the center of the fractal, and this is where we talked about truth. The fundamental principles, everything has to be based on fundamental principles. It doesn't matter what your business is, no matter how large, no matter how small, if we're dealing with the same fundamental principles. It's only a matter of scale on which business you're in that changes. And when we break down this triangle in more detail, which I haven't done in this video, but I will in future videos, we come up against one of the universal laws, and that's the 80-20 rule. And within the 80-20 rule, we can, we can see that 80% of the, the problem or 80% of the solution comes from 20% of the issues. And we can see that as we do the fractal inside the fractal inside the fractal, as we've done before, there's an 80-20 of the 80-20 and of the 80-20. And so there is one solution that will give us around 51% of the uh, benefit that we're looking to get, because this is the fractal of the fractal of the fractal. It's the 80-20 of the 80-20 of the 80-20. And so we can use this to, as this part of the lens of zooming in and out. Up here we have the slingshot. There's one thing that if we were to get it right, there's one new innovation, one new invention that would revolutionize everything. This, it only takes a small slingshot to bring down Goliath or bring down a bear, right? And so what is it? What, what, what could we innovate that brings about this transformation? And we also have to simplify. We have to radically simplify all of our systems in order to make things easier to do, cheaper to do, and to enable these systems to work effectively. And we're doing this final in integration of the solution with the new hope and the new standards in the new market reality in the real world. And we have to prove that what we're postulating here can work. And the only way we can do that is to do the change incrementally, piece by piece, trying these things out and making them work. Now, this is a very complex model, and I've only scratched the surface of it in these few minutes. But I hope you can see that when we have a system, and remember this was a system, this was a system, this was a system, all of these are systems within systems, which is how nature works. And when we can approximate nature, we get closer and closer to what we could believe is sustainable. And so in the next video in the series of masterclasses, I'm going to be talking about how nature designs and operates in a sustainable manner. And we're going to use a similar fractal approach to pull it apart and piece it together again 
And then in a future video again, we'll go into the world of business and say, okay, what's our parallel? How do we design like nature in our businesses? I hope you found this useful. It's a conceptual model that I find extremely useful. If you like to geek out like I do and think about how all these systems work, then please subscribe to my channel, look for the next videos, and I look forward to talking to you again.